Hey guys, this is Sarah from What a Nerd Girl Says, and it is extremely hot today. It's like 90 degrees, and it's April, and it's really hot, and I'm dying. And But the light is really awesome, because it's a sunny day, and so I decided to record a vlog, because they're kind of fun. And I love to talk, and I get to talk on these videos, and so it's really awesome. But, um, let's move on. I don't know if you guys saw my video the other day on like fangirl etiquette and that kind of stuff, but there was rule number five, which I really kind of wanted to expand on more, but I just haven't got a chance to, and I was going to write about it, but I'm being lazy and I'm talking about it because I'm kind of saving all my writing skills right now for my novel. It's time to finish that thing. Um, but... Yeah, and then my dear friend, uh, Christina, who is an amazing person and who writes for <clears throat> her own blog, which I'll put down in the info down there, and she writes for me, she writes for Oh The Book Feels and Grown Up Fangirl and Fangirl Daily, and I'm sure there are others because she's just awesome and she's all over the place. And she just did a vlog, which I will also put down in little infos down there and it kind of really got me thinking and it's it's kind of part of what I also wanted to address and I also kind of wanted to do a tattoo video and I wanted to do all kinds of stuff and I decided you know what I'm just going to do one big video so it might be kind of long and I'm going to talk for a while and I hope that you guys can listen because this video is not just for fangirls and it's not just for you know the people who would normally watch my videos it's for everybody you know and I'm going to get personal for with some stuff and share some stuff. And yeah, so let's just kind of, you know, dive into it, I guess. Um, lately, and I know that probably you guys have too, but lately I just feel like there's been this kind of like negative thing. And I'm, I guess it's not really lately, but I mean, I feel like maybe because I'm more involved, I've noticed it more. But this sort of like negative like cloud of just blah that is just like given to girls who call themselves nerds or try to integrate themselves into that world and it's coming a lot from the guys and but it's also coming from other girls and it's also coming from people who just aren't part of the world at all and it's been really frustrating for me. Um, I know a girl who's friends with me on Facebook. I've only met her once in real life, but she's really cool. She's really awesome. Her name's Claire. I'm just going to throw that out there. But she cosplays a lot. She goes to a lot of things. And she's, like, absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, she gets a lot of crap from people that just, like, tell her she's not a real nerd. And she's, like, infringing, like, on their world and stuff. And just, I don't know. It's weird. And... I don't know what, because she's pretty. Like, I don't really understand what that is all about. But that's just kind of the tip, like, the, just the tip of the iceberg that has been, like, the negativity. Um, I am a huge fangirl. I own it. It took a while for me to own it, but I, I did. I came, and I was like, this is me. Like, this is who I am. And if you don't like it, then fine, you know? But it doesn't stop that negativity. I mean, when I tell people, you know, I've got 10 tattoos now, which we'll get into a little bit more later. But people will see them, especially now that I have a lot of visible ones. I have the ones that are up here. I have the ones on my wrists and stuff like that. And people will see them. And it's, I kind of get, like, respect, you know, like, oh, wow, like, this girl's cool. She's got tattoos. But that minute that I tell them what it's for, they're just like, you, you like that? And I'm like, I went from being, like, super cool to just being, like, super lame, you know, in, like, all of, like, five seconds. When I tell people that I camp out or the things that I read, I mean, I just, there's a lot of judgment. And it's been really frustrating because even though I sit here and I'm like, this is who I am and this is who I like and this is what I do, it just frustrates me because, like, who were you to judge me? And why am I and so many other girls, especially the ones that will sit here and say we are fangirls and we are proud, why are we getting judged for that? And so I kind of wanted to talk about myself 
how I kind of came into this world and, and kind of go from there. And I hope that you can, you know, kind of sit back and enjoy that. And hopefully, even if, you know, if you're a fangirl, maybe you'll understand. And if you're not, maybe you'll understand more. And you're not going to judge people for what they like and what they do. So let's kind of go from there. So a question that I've noticed a lot that kind of, like, gets talked about a lot all over, like, the internet, especially with, like, fangirls and stuff, is, like, what is the book that, like did it for you like just made you become a reader and like I don't really have an answer to that question you know a lot of people like Harry Potter or the Myrtle Instruments or Divergent or The Fault in Our Stars I mean a lot of people that are getting into this fangirl world it's been very recent you know or you know even even books from like you know from when I was in high school or something like um Start of the Traveling Pants those kind of things those are the people things that people say but I don't have an answer for that because I have been reading my entire life and it has been like the one good like thing that I've always been good at. Um, my mom is a big reader. I think I learned to read when I was like three. Um, I don't know. I thought, I think my parents thought I was going to be like a genius child or something, which I'm pretty smart, but I'm definitely not a genius. Um, but I mean, I, I can't even remember when I was reading when I was three. Like, I, I tell people all the time, like, I don't know, Green Eggs and Ham? Like, because that's still one of my, like, favorite books of all time. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. And so, I mean, I've always just had this just, like, desire to just, like, be in a book. You know? I just, it's something that I've always been good at. I mean, I have done art, and I have done baseball, and, 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 and basketball, and softball, and... I have tried running, and I am not a sports person, and I'm, I'm smart, but I'm not, like, I'm not gonna be a doctor, or a lawyer, or anything like that, you know, I am not musical, I wish I could sing, I try to pretend that I can, when I drive in my car, but I'm not musical, I mean, I've tried to pick up instruments, and it just, like, baffles me, and reading is just one of those things that I've just always been good at, I mean, take on Monday. I read three books in one day. Not a lot of people can say that they do that. So reading has always been a huge thing for me and it's, I've just never really thought about it. I just remember a lot in middle school and high school and maybe elementary school, but mostly middle school and high school, just be, people being like, like, what are you doing? Like, put the book away. Like, you're always reading. And I'm like, it's what I like to do. And I got teased a lot and I I was not like a hugely popular kid I wasn't like a complete outcast but I was I was one of those kids that like if you look in the yearbook later like 10 years from now or something actually like I've been in high school for eight years so maybe people could do it now but like you flip through the pages and you like look at my picture and you'd probably be like who is that girl you know what I mean like I wasn't like not there but I wasn't like there I was just kind of like let's just get through this thing called high school you know you know, but I was teased a lot, and a lot of the people that, like, teased me, I don't think they even remember doing it, like, I'd just be sitting there and, like, reading my book and just, like, pa, like, there I want my book, and I would be like, what was that for? You know, and it really, really, really started when I started reading Harry Potter, and I started reading Harry Potter when I was 10. Um, I had a substitute teacher, and she brought the audiobook. And she brought Lemon Drops, which I will, like, I just will always remember this. And she played the audiobook for us. And I think we only got through, like, chapter one or something like that. But I was just, like, I don't know. I mean, chapter one of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone is not, like, the most amazing chapter in the world. I mean, it's, you kind of have to keep going. Like, it's definitely intriguing and obviously like, gets people to read it because people turn to chapter two. You know, but I was just, like, what is this? And... My dad took my brother and my sister to Borders. Rest in peace, Borders. I miss you. But they took took him to Borders to get books for, like, school or something. And he brought me home a book because he's not stupid. And he knows that you don't go to a bookstore without bringing me something because that's just messed up. And he, like, had heard because Harry Potter had already been out for, I believe, a year in the UK and had just come out here and it was getting lots of hype of course and he had heard it was good from like somebody there or something and he bought it for me and I like I said I, by this point I already heard the first chapter at school and I remember like him bringing it home and just being like oh my god and like they put out Chamber of Secrets and 
Prisoner of Azkaban, like, back-to-back, -back, basically. And it wasn't until Goblet of Fire that it was, like, an actual release here. And when it did, um, I mean, that was right then, kind of, when I just, like, I knew that, like, I was different, I guess. Like, I don't know, that sounds kind of weird. But I knew that I didn't react to things the same way, like, other people did. Um, Star Wars is another really big thing in my life. But that, I feel like it came from... The connection I had with it with my brother, uh, my my brother Joey. I've got three brothers and two sisters. Kind of got a large family. Uh, but my brother Joey broke his leg when he was two. Kind of an accident. My brother stepped on him. Whatever. But he was like in a full body cast like at two years old. I mean, you can imagine how horrible that is for a two-year-old. And the one thing he always wanted to do was to watch the original Star Wars trilogy, which we had on VHS. Like the original v VHS. Like not, oh my god. <sighs> like they need to put those out on blu-ray anyway and he, we would watch it and he would literally just like start over and so we'd watch it again I mean I became so obsessed with those movies and I was only like six or seven years old but I think it was once I really got into Harry Potter that I just knew that like I reacted to things a lot differently than other people I wasn't content to just wait for something like when Goblet of Fire came out I wanted it like now and people couldn't understand that like they just didn't and I was like I, I need it like I need it like I need it now because it had become so important to me and I'm gonna tell you a little story cause it's kind of funny but on um, the day the Goblet of Fire came out we went to the beach for some reason and I can't remember why but I know it was for my mom I don't know. It wasn't her birthday because her birthday's in November and the book didn't come out in November. And it wasn't Mother's Day because that's May and the books usually come out in like June or July. It just, it, I don't know. We went to the beach for her for some reason. And I wanted the book and my parents like would not buy it for me. And I remember being kind of a brat the whole day and like just like being at the beach and just being like meh, meh, meh you know. And I remember my dad just being like why aren't you having fun and I'd be like I'd be having fun if I had my book because I could be like relaxing in the sand reading my book I mean like I was just over the top and I remember we're like driving home and like when you leave like Newport Beach or whatever you know like you drive through the streets and stuff and then you like hit the freeway and right before you hit the freeway there was a border it's like right there and I remember like we had a big old van like so there was my mom my dad and then six kids and I was sitting in the back, and, like, my dad just, like, squeals, like, all just, like, turns into, like, the border's parking lot, like, slams into a parking spot, like, we all just, like, whoa, 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 and, like, gets out of the car and goes, like, stuck, and I'm, like, I think I'm in trouble, <laughs> and he comes out, and he's got, like, something in his hand, and it's, like, obviously Goblet of Fire, because Goblet of Fire is, like, a freaking fat book, you know, only Order of the Phoenix, I think, is bigger, and he comes back, and it's in a bag, and, like, he gets in the front seat, and I'm in the back seat, and you're talking about, like, you know, an eight-person van. Sure. And he turns around, and he's just like, you can shut up now, and, like, tosses at me, and I, like, caught it, and I just remember being like, oh, I'm in so much trouble, but being, like, so happy because I had the book, you know? And, you know, I ever since that moment, you know, just, I had to have a book when it came out, you know? And it, that was the way... It happened with Sarah Destin once I got obsessed with her and Make Habit and I mean definitely Harry Potter and when the movie started coming out and I had to go see him at midnight and you know people were just constantly like what is wrong with you like what like why you know and in the last two years it's gotten even more important to me you know especially with my blog I mean I don't get paid for this you know I don't get paid to write I don't get paid to do any of this but it's just so incredibly important to me and it's something that I'm passionate about and it basically boils down to this because all of these things they hold on I fix my bow I'll talk about my bow I'm wearing my bow on purpose I will talk about it in a sec but the books that I read the movies that I I get attached to like Star Wars or like the book to movie adaptations and the TV shows, mostly like Doctor Who. But I mean, the reason that they're so incredibly important to me is because they make me feel something. And I'm like gonna get choked up, I'm really emotional, so <laughs> if I cry in this video, I'm sorry. But they make me 
feel something, you know, and I've not had a hard life. Really, I've, compared to other people, like, I've been so incredibly lucky. I have two, you know, parents have taken so much care of me. I've got a huge family. I've got, you know, I've, I've always had friends. I've kind of had different friends throughout the year. I wish I would have had, like, you know, like, a set group of friends that have just, like, never gone away, but that's just not how my life has been. But, I've been very lucky, but there's also been things that have happened that have just have, you know, brought me down, and when my parents were fighting a lot when I was younger, it was hard, and that's when I discovered Harry Potter, and Harry Potter was a world that was so much, I mean, there were things that were better, obviously, because I wanted to be an 11-year-old kid that got to go to a school full of magic and just amazingness, but I don't also want to be the kid that's like, you know, like has to fight a dark lord and stuff but it, so there was parts of it that was better than my life and parts of it that was worse but it wasn't my life and I think that's what people don't understand is like the feelings that we get from books and stuff I mean it's just incredible and it's just there's just there's just no explanation for it because you just don't it's so hard to explain you know because it just means so much to us to escape somewhere else just for a little bit you know and that's what a book does and it's like maybe you don't understand that feeling I mean maybe you know I don't know and that's kind of where the bow comes in I'm wearing a bow it's it's red white and you can see a little baseball on it and that's for my baseball team the angels I'm very very passionate about and you would think a person who loves books and a person who loves baseball I freaking love baseball like I count down the days till April because I love baseball because it makes me feel something because it does something for me because when I get into a game it is an escape from the world you know because sometimes this world just gets crappy and it makes me feel something and it's only in the last few years that I've really been able to like come to terms with this kind of thing and tell people like this is who I am and you are judging me for that you know and I get people who are like okay fine you know you read Harry Potter everybody reads Harry Potter it's so popular but you have to get tattoos do you have to get a personalized license plate for it? do you have to put posters on your and I'm like this is why the way I share my passion you know I don't judge you for what you do you know if you want to walk around and get yeah I don't know I just it's so frustrating to me and then it's like well people will accept Harry Potter because the Harry Potter is you know so popular and so acclaimed but then when I tell people that I read like the Hunger Games or Divergent or the or Vampire Academy it's suddenly like why and it's so frustrating because like I said I haven't had the worst life but I've had hard stuff and it helps me get even the days where it just life just sucks like, I woke up late, and my hair didn't go well, and I was late to work, and I messed up, you know, just stuff like that. Like, it just makes life that much better. And I don't know who I would be if I wasn't a fangirl. Like, and there's a lot of negative feelings to the word fangirl. Like, you know, like, we're just crazy girls that are overreacting to stuff. And I'm like, no, that's not how I feel. I am proud. And there's a book that just came out last year that I wanted to read because of the title and then I ended up reading it and it made me sob and it's funny because people are like it's not a sad book and I'm like I know <laughs> like I I know and it's called <laughs> Fangirl by Rainbow Burwell and I don't think there's like anybody else in this world that is just like written something that they just get it you know, they just get how sometimes the outside world, outside of this computer, outside of my room, outside of the wonderful people that I've met online, and that kind of thing, they just don't, like, understand what these books do to us and how real they feel to us. You know, and I read her book, and I was just, like, blown away, and I just wanted to, like, hug her and be like, like, thank you. Like, you literally made a book that is like my life and you get it and it's an incredible book and I get to meet her this weekend and I'm just gonna go up to her and be like 
nobody has put into words what you did that makes me feel like validated for the way I feel about things. You know, I love being a fangirl. There is nothing I love more. And the people that I've met, I have people that have, like, you don't even have friends. I'm like, I actually have a lot of friends. They're just, like, not here. I'm taking this bell off. It's driving me crazy. Like, they're just not here in this room with me all the time. I've met a lot of friends in real life, and I love it, but I have so many friends online. I'm like, oh, why? Because they don't live here. They get that passion that I have, and they get why these books mean so much to me. And they understand why I will camp for days for a movie, or I will camp out for a book or to meet somebody. They get it. They get what they do for me. And what they do is just they, they make me feel feel something and that's not to say that like people don't make me feel something or that kind of thing but the way books and or say a movie or a tv show makes me feel is just it's not like anything else you know and the way a book makes me feel is just incredible you know and I put that on me and I think that's a way people just start to judge me too you know I have 10 tattoos and nine of them are for fandoms the 10th one is for my favorite band which is kind of a fandom so I kind of just say I have 10 but for the purpose of this I have four Harry Potter tattoos I have my Deathly Hollow symbol which you can it's really hard to like show and then I have Whip Beyond Measure on this hand it says man's greatest treasure there's really no other way to like show it sorry guys and I have my Doctor Who tattoo I have my model instruments tattoo I have my Triss Ravens I know they're not like the book I got these for a reason I'm not gonna even go into it and then I have my Molnia from Vampire Academy um, the ones I really can't show, I have one on the back of my neck, which is my Star Wars tattoo. And then I have Always from Harry Potter on my ankle. And that's also where the musical notes for my favorite song are. And those are probably the ones that I get the most judgment for. And people are like, I just, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I don't, I don't understand. And the fact is Harry Potter there's four of them on my body because they gave me a purpose in life they gave me Harry Potter is like my religion and it sounds stupid and I applaud everybody who has a religion because they have those religions to guide them and to give them what they think is right in life what is right and what is wrong but I am not a religious person I am an atheist and I hope that doesn't like make you guys all run away or something but the Harry Potter was kind of what taught me what was right and wrong. And it was the one place I could go that I knew I could learn about friendship and family and bravery and selflessness and, and sacrifice and all that stuff. That's where I learned so much. And every time I read those books, I'm just, it, I feel those again. And I remember the first moment that I read them and what they did for me. Um, you know, there's, there's just different things. Like... The Mortal Instruments is one that I get a lot of, um, you know, flack for because people are just like, it's like Twilight or she copied so and so or whatever, you know. Stop judging, like, the books and me for reading them because you're not me. You're not me when I read those books. When I read those books, I picked them up at the bookstore and me and my boyfriend, who we are together, we had broken up for a couple months, about f almost four years ago, and it was like the most devastating time in the world for me, and people didn't really understand because there was a lot more to the breakup than people understood, and it's something that I don't talk about because it's very personal, and it's not something that I like to share with people because there's just so much more to it, and it's really not no one's business, but it was a devastating and heartbreaking time and instead of turning to each other to deal with it we pushed each other away and we broke up for a couple months it was really hard it was a really hard time and I never felt like that before and the I mean what do I do when I'm down like that I read because it my world sucks so I need to find a different world and 
Guys, I'm getting emotional. I picked up City of Bones because I saw it and it looked interesting and I was like, alright. And at that point, City of Bones or City of Glass was out and Clockwork Angel and nothing else. And I busted through all four of those books in four days. I just kept going back to Borders. I just bought all of them, but like, I just kept going back to Borders. Because those books just were amazing to me and they made, they just, they took me away from everything. They made everything feel like so better you know they just like I read them and like I didn't hurt anymore you know I didn't I wasn't thinking about being alone I wasn't thinking about the things that made me and my boyfriend break up for that time there's just so much more to my life and those books I mean that's why they're on my body you know and so when there's those guys out there or just even people that look at me and they're just like, one, you're fake. What I feel when I watch Doctor Who or Star Wars or I read a book or I go and watch a movie adaptation of a book that I love, like, this is not fake. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I am not. I'm not trying to do any of that. Like, this is real. What I feel is real. And for you to judge me based on that is just I can't handle that and I can't understand why someone would do that there's a lot of things I don't understand like my brothers will like some of the weirdest things and I'm like I don't like I don't get it like that's just what and I'm victim of that too like I will judge other people and I'm trying to be better because I can't I don't understand how someone can sit there and judge something that makes me feel so much and does so much for me. So I'm trying to do that back to other people, you know, and trying to understand that, like, maybe this is not something that you understand, but maybe there's something that you do that I don't understand. But just because we don't understand, we understand what it does for each other. And that's, like, the most important part, is that you may not get it. You may not get why a boy wizard or a shadow hunter or a alien who's 900 years old who travels in time and space or why a girl with raven tattoos or any of that like does something for me but it does and like that's so huge to me and there's a reason that I camp out because it just it it means so much to me and you may not get it, and you and you may look at me like I'm a silly little girl who puts posters up on her wall, or gets stickers all over her car, or puts ink on her body, but it's because it's important to me. And just because you don't get it doesn't mean you should judge people for that, you know? And I'm so proud of who I am. I'm so proud to be part of this world, and I'm so happy to have met other people who feel the same way you know I felt like I was alone for so long because I wasn't as involved on the internet as I am now and I just didn't think anyone understood you know I never really met anybody who got it and now I do and I every day I'm more and more proud of who I am and when people judge I am like I don't care I who cares who are you to judge me for the things I like you know, I love these books. I love these movies. I love these TV shows. I love every bit of ink that I put on my body. And I am going to continue to put ink on my body to represent these things because of what they do for me. There is a Cassandra Clare quote in The Infernal Devices that says, and I'm getting it tattooed on my arm because it's literally like everything that I've talked about in the past like 20 something minutes. And I hope you guys are still here because... God, I've been going on forever. But it is, it was books that made me feel that perhaps I was not completely alone. <laughs> like, yes. Yes. Exactly. We all feel lonely at times, and there's times where we're alone. And But when I'm alone, I still have so much, you know, and... I think there needs to be a little bit more love out there, you know? I feel like Christina did her video, which, again, is down below, and she said, you know, we just need to love each other and respect each other and understand that things are important to some people and there are things that I don't understand that are important to others, and we should 
stop judging each other. And I'm a fangirl and I'm a nerd and I'm proud of it. And I don't care whether you think I'm big enough or if I'm a real nerd or any of that. Like, I don't care anymore. Because that's who I am and I'm proud of it and I wear it proudly. Because it's not about how many things I own or even the tattoos on my body, you know? Like, or even how many tattoos I get or how many people I meet or how many books I read. It's how they make me feel and the passion that I have for it. And I do all this because of what it means to me. I don't get paid for any of this. I don't get paid to go out and meet these people. I don't get paid to write about it. I don't get paid to sleep in my car, you know? But I do it because it means something to me. And whatever your thing is, wear it proud. You know, be proud of who you are, you know? I don't like labels a lot, you know? I, I you know, who, whatever, own them. They're going to be out there. I'm a fanger. I'm a nerd. If you are a hipster or... I don't know. I don't even know. But if whatever you are, be proud of it. You know, wear it proud, and don't let people bring you bring you down. Put posters on your wall. Put ink on your skin. Scream it from the rooftops. Like, don't let people hold you back. You know, because it they don't matter. You know, whatever. What the only thing that matters is you and what you care about, what you're passionate about, and books are what I'm passionate about, and pe people have a problem with that, the, they have bigger problems, because they need to get over it, and I'm done with it, you know, and I've talked your ear off for like a half an hour now, and I feel kind of bad, and I hope you're still here, and I hope that you guys get it, and you understand what it means to be a fangirl to me, and why I am one, and why I'm proud to be one, because of the things that it does for me, and the people it brings in my life, and I feel like I need to go up to every author and every actor that has done something that means something to me, and be like, what you do matters. Christine said that every day, what you do matters, when you write a book, it matters to me, and it does something for me. So don't stop, you know, and I want to be that person. This is why I write, one, because I think I'm good at it, and two, I want to, if I can just make one person feel the way I feel after reading a book, a really good book, then I feel like I've accomplished something. So again, I've talked your ear off for a very long time, and I hope that you're still here, and I hope that I didn't bore you, and I hope that you can leave this video proud of whoever you are, whether you're a fangirl or not. And I hope that you can go out there and not judge other people. And that you can be a big person. And you can accept me for who I am. And I can accept you for who you are. And, you know, I'm proud to be a fangirl. And you should be proud to be whatever you are. And, yeah. Thanks for listening, I guess. Thanks for watching. Um... Please find me on Twitter and Tumblr and Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff because I love talking to you guys. I love meeting all of you. I love sharing with you guys. So please do that and I will see you on the blog. I will see you in the interwebs. Bye guys.